Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy false prophets and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor as the labor progresses the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes as we get closer to jesus return all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense all of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time Russia's invasion of Ukraine is forcing its neighbor Finland to rush toward the embrace of NATO and the U.S. Just one month after joining NATO, Finland hosting its new allies for war games, learning how to fight together and sending a clear message to Moscow. Finland's foreign minister telling NBC News that these days her country has almost no relationship with Russia. You can't have a normal relationship with a country that is actively waging a war, not complying with international law. But it wasn't always like this. For years, Finland and Sweden, just like Switzerland, prided themselves on neutrality, steering clear of conflicts between major powers. But look what's happened since Russia invaded Ukraine last year. Russia's border with NATO countries more than doubled. NATO's territory is set to expand by more than 300,000 square miles, including Sweden. The U.S. troop presence in Europe surged to 100,000 for the first time in decades, with 40,000 NATO troops deployed to Russia's doorstep. And Russia's neighbors increasingly convinced that Moscow is a threat not just to Ukraine, but to them. Finland was invaded by the former Soviet Union back in 1939. But for decades, its 830-mile border with Russia has been calm. These days, the signs of a growing rupture are everywhere. Beyond hosting those military exercises, both on land and in air, Moscow and Helsinki are kicking out each other's diplomats. Russia shutting down Finland's consulate in St. Petersburg. Visits between their militaries designed to build trust now canceled. In southeast Finland, a statue of revolutionary leader Vladimir Lenin dismantled, while Finland begins building a border fence and tightening rules on Russian citizens crossing the border. How tense is the situation now on the Russia-Finland border? We have always had this long border with Russia, and unfortunately we have also been in a situation where we have had to defend our country against a Russian invasion. We are not concerned. We are prepared. Tonight, amid growing tensions with China, we're with American forces in the Pacific, where General Mike Minahan is preparing his airmen for a mission he's warned could come soon. Do you think the U.S. could be at war with China in the next few years? It's not me to say whether we could be at war with China in the next few years. Earlier this year, Minahan, the head of Air Mobility Command, wrote a controversial memo to his commanders warning the U.S. could be at war with China in two years and they need to be prepared. Do you still believe that? I don't believe conflict is inevitable. I don't believe it's unavoidable. Um, but I also believe that ready now is what matters most. There have already been flashpoints. This Chinese fighter jet recently buzzing an American surveillance plane and this Chinese warship crossing dangerously close to an American ship in the South China Sea. Minahan now preparing with Exercise Mobility Guardian. 70 aircraft and more than 3,000 airmen from seven countries, the largest readiness exercise in the command's history. Including this British cargo plane dropping off U.S. equipment, then simulating a medical evacuation. Also practicing resupplying bases in remote areas. Cargo door. Acknowledged. This mission to drop supplies to airmen establishing a base on a tiny island north of Guam. We're directly over the drop zone right now. About a dozen aircraft are beginning to drop their supplies and aid to the troops below. In his memo, Minahan told airmen to get ready by firing from a clip and to aim for the head. I'm not trying to be provocative. I'm trying to provide my formation with the tools and the action and the priority necessary to win. Do you still agree with everything you wrote in that January memo? I agree absolutely with the urgency and the action. 
Are you ready now? We are ready now. Russian strikes targeted the capital for a third straight night. Air defense is intercepting drones launched at Kyiv and surrounding areas. Now, the attacks come after a NATO summit wrapped up in Lithuania yesterday, where President Vladimir Zelensky was given security guarantees, but no timeline on when Ukraine will be joining the military alliance. Russia's foreign minister says Moscow will view F-16 fighter jet transfers to Ukraine as a nuclear threat. Sergei Lavrov clarifying his position over the plane's capacity of carrying nuclear weapons. Ukrainian pilots are being trained on how to fly F-16s, but countries have stopped short of making concrete pledges. Dmitry Kuleba, the Ukrainian foreign minister, reacted to the words of his counterpart in Russia, Sergei Lavrov, predictably really, saying Ukraine will receive the F-16 fighter jets according to the timetable and Russia will accept it. This after Lavrov had said that the West giving Ukraine F-16s would be considered by Russia a new nuclear threat because these are fighter jets that can carry nuclear weapons. On the other hand, of course, the Ukrainian authorities, uh, when we're not talking about nuclear weapons use per se, but about a different kind of nuclear threat, the idea that the Russians could blow up uh, part of the Zaporizhia nuclear power station, which they currently occupy, that Kiev sees as a very real threat. Breaking overnight, North Korea launched a suspected long-range ballistic missiles just days after it threatened the United States over alleged spy flights. Japanese officials say that the missile flew for more than an hour before landing in the Sea of Japan, the longest flight time ever for a North Korean missile. On Monday, Pyongyang accused the United States of flying a spy plane into its territory. North Korea warned that a, quote, shocking incident could occur if the U.S. intrusions continued. U.S. officials dismiss the accusations. North Korea has been firing projectiles repeatedly since the beginning of this year, including ICBM-class missiles. The North's actions cannot be condoned as they threaten the peace and security of Japan, the region, and the international community. First Thessalonians 5.3, while people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. So how does peace and security lead to sudden destruction? And what is the sudden destruction? Is it the rapture of the church? Is it the revealing of the Antichrist? Is it war? While we can conjecture what the sudden destruction is, the Apostle Paul tells us Christians are not part of it. The Apostle Paul says this in 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 through 18. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. In these verses of Scripture, the Apostle Paul is undoubtedly talking about the rapture of the church. The Apostle Paul continues in 1 Thessalonians 5.3, For when they say peace and security, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. The Apostle Paul makes a distinction between we and they. In 1 Thessalonians 4, Paul says, We who are alive and remain will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, along with the dead in Christ, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. In 1 Thessalonians 5.3, Paul says, While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. The sudden destruction that comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape could very well be when the rapture occurs. This sudden destruction comes upon them while they are saying peace and security. Sudden destruction comes and this is where the distinction the Apostle Paul makes comes into play. They will not escape. That would seemingly indicate that we escape as we read in Luke 21:36. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Sudden is the Greek word epnidios, which means unexpected, suddenly. Destruction is the Greek word alethros, which means ruin, i.e. death, punishment. First Thessalonians 5.3 could be translated like this. For when they say peace and security, then unexpected and sudden punishment comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. Could it be that this sudden destruction is the rapture of the church? 
1 Corinthians 15.52 tells us that the rapture will happen suddenly, in the twinkling of an eye. 1 Corinthians 15.50-54 Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Twinkling is the Greek word repe, which means a jerk of the eye. By analogy, an instant, i.e. suddenly. Is the sudden destruction coming, and with it the rapture of the church? We see the prophesied Antichrist right onto the world stage in Revelation 6-2. Immediately following the rider of the white horse beginning his conquest of the world, we see peace will be taken from the earth when the rider of the red horse of war begins his ride across the earth as we read in Revelation 6, 3 and 4. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see, another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. Those who are here to see this, will be as those who lived in the days of Noah. All will be well and life will be moving forward as normal when suddenly, a flood of God's judgment will begin to fall on mankind which will last for seven years, the culmination of which will be the visible, physical, bodily return of Jesus Christ to the earth at Armageddon. Is the sudden destruction coming, and with it the rapture of the church, the revealing of the Antichrist, and war? All those who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, will not be here to see the terrible time to come wherein God's judgment will fall upon a world that has forgotten him. Where will we be? In the presence of Jesus Christ our Lord as a result of the rapture of the church. And there will be no announcement as to when that will take place whatsoever prior to it occurring. And if you find yourself here after it occurs, your future is going to be horrific. The stage is being set for Daniel's prophecy concerning the arrival of the Antichrist which will be preceded by the rapture of the church. The only conclusion one can draw from all this is this. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Consider this a heads up if you're a Christian, and be forewarned if you're a non-believer. If you're watching this and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's time to get to know Him, and the sooner the better. Stay tuned as we continue to watch Bible prophecy unfold right before our very eyes. We're going to begin as we have every day this week with the weather, this time severe weather, tornadoes in the Chicago area. Look at this massive twister churning past fields in Campton Hills, Illinois. Another tornado near O'Hare International Airport forced hundreds of people to take shelter there. Luckily, the airport was spared any damage, but take a look at these pictures from the nearby city of Elgin. Roxana Sabiri is in McCook, Illinois for us. With more on the story, Roxana, good morning. Good morning, Gail. The storm ripped off the roof here at the Skyline Motel last night, sending debris everywhere. It also knocked out the wall of this garage. You can see inside, it's just some of the damage in what many here said was a close call. In the village of Campton Hills, zero visibility rain set the scene for this tornado churning west of Chicago. It was just one of the numerous reports of tornadoes surrounding the nation's third largest city. Oh my God. Oh my God. A tornado touched down near O'Hare International Airport, sending thousands of travelers in multiple terminals to seek shelter away from the windows. Flights there and at Midway were grounded for around 45 minutes. The damage across the area was extensive, snapping metal street signs, tearing down trees, and peeling roofs. Right now, these four houses are uninhabitable that are identifying with structural issues. Over in 30 seconds. Tornado! Elgin, a community northwest of Chicago, took a hit. Several homes were damaged. All I saw was the tornado come straight down here and uh, debris started flying all over the place. The tornadoes capped days of severe weather in the Chicago area, including hailstorms and heavy winds. But despite the destruction, there are no reports of injuries. So far, nobody's injured. I mean, everybody's come out and everybody's okay, so that's the most important thing. Catastrophic flooding in Vermont. Crews are racing to save people right now. It could take days before everyone trapped is rescued. Janae Norman is in Montpelier. Good morning, Janae. George, good morning. A major part of that flooding was from the Winooski River here, overflowing its banks and reaching its second highest peak ever at 21 feet. This morning it's receded back to normal levels, but more rain is on the way. 
catastrophic flooding causing widespread destruction in Vermont. And this morning, the race to rescue residents who may still be trapped after flash flooding wiped out roadways, destroyed railways, and turning streets and parking lots into near lakes. More than a dozen Vermont Swift Water Rescue teams deployed. At least 117 rescues, as much of the state is left underwater. Officials in Montpelier saying it's still too dangerous to get some people out. The devastation and flooding we're experiencing across Vermont is historic and catastrophic. Kevin and Mary O'Donnell evacuated their home, seeking refuge in a Montpelier hotel, only for the floodwaters to rise there. Up to eight inches drenched the state's capital city, causing flash floods. I don't think anyone saw this coming. We don't really know the extent of the damage yet, and we won't until it's safe to go into the buildings. Extreme heat that is stretching from coast to coast. One place in America is expected to be the hottest place on Earth this week. Matt Rivers is in Phoenix, Arizona, where it's been more than 110 degrees for 11 straight days. Good morning, Matt. Good morning, Michael. It's early morning here in Phoenix. This is the coolest part of the day, and yet it is still more than 90 degrees right now. It makes an already difficult job for the men and women at the Phoenix Fire Department that much harder. This morning, extreme heat scorching millions of Americans, and it's only getting hotter. Phoenix now in its 12th straight day of 110 degree temperatures or higher. We rode along with Phoenix Fire, Engine 18, crews at the ready for residents overwhelmed by the oppressive temperatures. Phoenix, no stranger to soaring temperatures, but even for locals like Fire Captain Tim West, this heat wave brutal. His job, harder. It sneaks up on you, so, um, you know, trying to be prepared and stay hydrated before it gets to that point. In this kind of heat, you really have to worry about the little ones, too, even at the playground. I mean, consider this surface, according to this, 130 degrees. It can take just seconds to get a second degree burn. The University Medical Center of Phoenix reporting heat related illnesses every day. We've learned one man has died. The sweltering temperatures also sweeping the rest of the south from Texas to Florida. It's hot, man. It's quite hot. Residents there trying to cool down any way possible. And unfortunately, there is no end in sight to these temperatures. In fact, it's only going to get hotter over the next few days. We could be approaching 120 degrees in some places this weekend. As we look at the news, there is no doubt we are in the birth pains Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24, 8. We see many of God's remedial judgments manifesting as if God is warning us of things to come and calling on people to repent. We see war and rumors of wars, famine, and pestilence resulting in the deaths of thousands around the world. We are seeing earthquakes, extreme heat, floods, wildfires, tornadoes, hailstorms, and hurricanes, all at record levels of frequency and intensity, just like Jesus said would happen just prior to his return. The judgments God will use to punish mankind with during the seven-year tribulation will be much worse than any of us can imagine. Still, this is God's grace and mercy, proving to everyone that these judgments come from him and he is still offering forgiveness of sins through his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I implore you to do so today as we are not guaranteed tomorrow. Keeps me on edge. That's because Willie Holloway lives on the edge. His home is right next to the sinkhole. He remembers when it first opened in 2013 and swallowed Jeffrey Bush while he was sleeping in his home. His body was never found. My daughter loaded the car up. Holloway was ready to leave, but was assured it was safe. Then the sinkhole reopened in 2015, and then again Friday morning. Home surveillance video shows the moment the sinkhole reappeared. It's been, what, 10 years now? And this is the third time it opened. This is about the same size hole and in pretty much the exact same location as it was in 2015. A new report shows the sinkhole measures 19 by 16 feet wide and 19 feet deep. County officials say they're urgently working to get it closed back up. The plan is to fill the hole with water and gravel, just like when they filled it after the first collapse. In the meantime, county officials say everyone living nearby is safe. Holloway still lives in constant fear. One day, out of things, out of Sinkhole is going to run me out, run us out one day. I don't know when, but it will. And it's been nerve wracking. Romans 8, 21 and 22. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. 
for we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Monsoon rains come every year, but these are falling too fast. Floods in northern India are threatening lives and livelihoods. Many are already counting the cost to the agricultural sector and the wider economy. There's been a lot of damage. The water has swept off bridges, hotels and local houses. At least 72 deaths have been reported so far since June 21st. There's been a loss of hundreds of thousands of rupees. Parts of India have recorded the heaviest rainfall on record in decades. The northern state of Punjab received double the expected average rainfall, while the Himalayan state of Himachal Pradesh recorded 10 times its average. In the city of Mandi, homes, schools and temples were destroyed by a deluge of water and mud. The water level is so high that people in my height will drown. My kids are very young. All our vehicles are underwater. All our belongings inside are badly damaged. Not just us, everyone living in the area is in the same boat, facing the same issues. India has experienced extreme weather patterns in recent years, but this time around it's particularly severe. Scientists say climate change is fueling the above-average rainfall. While India's population of 1.3 billion people relies on the annual rainfall for farming, too much of it is now causing mayhem. Tonight, Uruguay is suffering its worst drought in decades. This reservoir is a major water source for the capital, Montevideo. The water levels are so low, it's become unrecognizable. This local saying the water used to cover everything in sight as he stood surrounded by weeds and cracked dirt. It's horrible, it's horrible, horrible, horrible. The reservoir at Uruguay's largest dam, today only using less than 2% capacity. The record drought and low rainfall has forced water officials to declare an emergency and use water from a saltier supply for the nearby 1.8 million people in the capital region. <laughs> Residents there who used to drink safely from the tap forced to buy water bottles to avoid what they say is foul-tasting water. <laughs> This woman saying the water upsets her stomach and gives her headaches. Health officials have denied widespread negative health claims caused by the water. The government now distributing drinking water to the most vulnerable and exempting taxes on bottled water while promising a new reservoir. The drought and foul-tasting tap water also inciting protests in the nation. For now, residents continue stocking up on water, waiting out their only hope, new rain. As southern Europe braces for another wave of soaring temperatures, it's not just people that are struggling to cope with the heat. In Madrid Zoo and others across the region, staff are working in various ways to help their animals keep cool. For some, it's frozen treats. For others, a gentle hosing. The Mediterranean and southern Balkans will likely see the severest heat from the weather system crossing from North Africa. Forecasters are predicting temperatures well into the 40s in some places. In some urban areas, authorities are implementing heat wave crisis plans, including reducing working hours and issuing phone alerts. It comes as other parts of Europe recover from extreme weather of another kind. Austria was one of several countries lashed by storms that brought high winds and flooding in recent days. The world is baffled at the events taking place in the weather. And yet, it was foretold 2,000 years ago in Bible prophecy that this would happen, as we read in Matthew 24, 3-8. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming, and the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars? See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. The term birth pains is an illustration based on how a woman goes through labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. So we can expect pestilence in the form of extreme weather to continue to be more frequent and more intense right up to the time of Jesus' second coming. As these things get worse, and they will, 
we know that the Lord's return is not far away. Satan knows he has but a short time and he is using climate change to deceive the masses into thinking it is real. When in actuality, it is God letting us know through powerful weather events that Jesus is returning very soon. Climate change is simply Satan's counter to Jesus' signs of his return and the end of the age. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4 But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Luke 21, 26-28 Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation. Repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church, you may be at work, you may be asleep, God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.